Hello, I'm Walt Jakewith, Applications Expert for Imaginex Technologies and Certified Inventor Professional. In this video, I'm going to talk about using downloaded McMaster car part files in your inventor assemblies. Let's jump right in. McMaster Car's website is a great resource for any CAD designer. Many of the thousands of parts they offer are available for download in a variety of CAD formats. For this video, I've downloaded three examples. A simple socket head cap screw, a 90 degree pipe thread elbow, and a plastic bulkhead fitting. All three were downloaded as step files and imported into Inventor where they were saved as regular Inventor parts. As useful as the McMaster car parts are, they do have a significant drawback. They come with any threads on the parts modeled accurately. This introduces two issues which can quickly become problems if they are not addressed. The first potential problem is the size of the files. If I place a comparable cap screw from Content Center and then check the file size in Eye Properties, we can see that this file size is reasonably modest. Checking the McMaster car version, that file is almost five times as big. The extra kilobytes are all in those spiral threads. They are comprised of complex surfaces which take up a lot of resources. Just on the principle of the thing, you want to keep your files as clean and lean as possible, and this is especially true of library type files such as hardware, which tend to get used a lot. File size is one issue, but it alone probably isn't enough to justify the time to fix it unless your assemblies are very large. The second problem that the threads cause is much more serious. When models are placed in a drawing, the drawing views have to calculate the hidden lines even if they are not shown. This isn't a problem with one or two components, but if you are using McMaster car parts extensively in your designs, there might be hundreds of them in there. This will, at some point, start to affect your drawing performance. I have experienced this personally and seen it seriously hamper the productivity of an entire design team. If you are using these parts, they are cutting into your drawing performance to some degree. The more threaded parts in your assemblies, the bigger the hit. So what can be done? McMaster car models are too convenient not to use. One solution is to modify the models to remove the threads. That's the option we'll be looking at here. The easy and quick way to get rid of the threads in the model is to just wash over them with an extrusion. This solves the bigger problem of threads in the drawings, but does not address the issue of file size. That's because the extrusion command is history-based, meaning that the threads are actually still there. It would be better to address both problems at once. This takes a bit of extra effort, but is well worth doing for components that get used over and over in your assemblies. The problem is that in this case, Inventor is too smart. What we want is a dumb solid edit that doesn't preserve the history of the part's features. We can get this through the Edit Solid command. You find it by right-clicking on the feature icon in the browser, or under the Solid Body in the Solid Bodies folder. The Edit Solid command gives me a few tools in the ribbon, but the one I want is found elsewhere. Holding down the control key, I'm going to select these three surfaces, and then right-click and select Delete. Notice that this command doesn't add a feature to the browser. Short of invoking the undo command, those threads are completely gone. Now if I save the file and check the size, the file size is below 140 kilobytes. About 820 kilobytes in that file were taken up with those threads. Now I want to back up using the undo command and talk about the process a bit. In this example, the fix was quick and easy, but that's because I practiced with this model and knew what to do. It isn't always as easy as I made it look. Sometimes deleting surfaces on these models give unexpected results. Let's look at some examples. If I choose either of the side surfaces to delete, 
It deletes the threads to the minimum diameter instead of the maximum. Sometimes selecting both side surfaces works, and sometimes it doesn't. If I select the inner thread surface to delete, it blows away the entire shaft. Deleting the upper thread surface alone gives a fairly predictable result. The point of showing you all that is that there are going to be some parts that you'll have to experiment on a bit to find the right combination to get the result you're looking for. As you gain experience with the tool, you'll guess right more often than not, but it's not completely predictable. This is especially true on more complex parts like the tapered threads in pipe fittings. Let's look at an example. Before we start, let's check the size of this file. Over 1400 kilobytes, almost a meg and a half, just for a 3 quarter inch pipe fitting. We can do much better. In this example, the threads are not only tapered, but they're female threads, so they're harder to get to. Normally, the first thing I'll try is the side bottom side option that worked in the previous example. That one works often, but in this case it makes a mess. The culprit is this end on the thread. I'll try the two sides and that end surface. And that got it. Interestingly enough, the other end isn't modeled quite the same way. Just selecting the two thread sides works there. Now I'll save the file and check the size. We're down to 325 kilobytes, a much more comfortable size for a library part of this type. By the way, if I wanted to remove all the interior features of this model, that's fairly easy as well. I might want to do that if I wanted to add in vendor pipe thread hole features. Let's take a look at the third test subject. This part imported with three solid bodies, one of which has threads to deal with. I'll turn visibility off on two of the solids, leaving this main piece. I'll edit the solid and start with the outer threads. These should be fairly easy. I'll grab these three surfaces, delete them, and that worked perfectly. Let's try the inner threads on one end of the part. The same three surfaces are worth a try. Oops. Not what I wanted at all. I'll back up and try just the two side surfaces of the thread. That looks like it worked, but I can see that it deleted to the maximum diameter and not the minimum. That might be fine, and if it is, we're done here but I'd like to try for the inner thread surface, so I'll back up once again. Selecting just the bottom trough of the threads gets rid of that feature. And then the two remaining surfaces. Nope. I'll try just one of the thread surfaces. Okay, this isn't working, but there's more than one way to get the job done. 
I'm going to go back to the closest solution I had, the outer thread diameter. Now I'll select the thread surface and pick the offset tool. I'll play with the offset till I get the right look. I could look up the inner and outer dimensions of the pipe thread and get it perfect, but it's just not that critical. That looks good. Finally to the other end. The same thing will work there. And I'm done. So I've used a variety of techniques to get the models adjusted. Most are fairly easy, but I have found threads that just didn't want to go away. I have, in those cases, simply deleted that entire portion of the model, the shank of a bolt for instance, and remodeled it using regular inventor tools. McMaster car parts aren't that hard that often, but anything that works is fair game in a troublesome model. That's all for this video. I'll see you next time, and happy modeling.